didn't bother us at all, did it? We're all in the right here. Under a nice warm roof. So good to see everyone. Out of reverence to our Lord and Savior, let's bow our heads now. Dear Lord, this morning we only have to look around to see the beautiful earth, to feel the raindrops, and even hear the cicadas. You have created everything and remain in charge. We give you thanks and praise this morning. Now we ask your blessings upon Pastor Steve as he brings us a message of hope and salvation from the scriptures. These things we ask in your name. Amen. Before we move forward, let's uh, open up for a few announcements. Anyone have any announcements this morning? It's good to have everybody here on this nice, rainy Sunday. Yes, I'd like to uh, say that this coming Saturday, a week from now, Rose and I will be together for 61 years. And they, they say that the only saints are in heaven. Uh, yeah. uh, congratulations. I think that's great. Any other uh, announcement? Uh, Hillary. Good morning, church. I am still collecting pictures for the photo directory, so... Um, if you need your picture taken after service today, you can meet me in the fellowship hall or you can find my information, my email and phone number in the directory that Margie put together um, and you can email or text me pictures um, that you would like to put in the directory. They can be of just you or your, you and your spouse. Thank you. Is it all right to draw our own picture? Uh, it's, a, it's like a stick man. <laughs> Any other announcement? Anyone? Wow. That's unusual. Okay. We're going to move on. We, we might beat the uh, Baptist to the restaurant today. I don't know. <laughs> A little pressure on me, I guess. All right. Let's stand and greet everyone. It's te tell everybody, it's good to have you out on this wet Sunday morning. Let's remain standing, and we're going to sing. Good morning to you. Wonderful words of life.
At this time, we're going to go to our Lord in prayer, but before we do, I want to open it up to anyone that has a prayer request or maybe a praise. Let me just say to Linda Burnett, if you're watching this morning, we miss you and we pray that you will get better uh, each day, a little stronger each day. So God bless you. Uh, Thurston's granddaughter is uh, fixing to deliver a baby, and she has got toxemia real bad. And the, but she'll be 37 weeks tomorrow, so they're going to put her in the hospital tomorrow. She wants to have the baby natural, but I don't see it happening with her blood pressure shooting sky high. So y'all keep her and the baby both in your prayers. Her name is Madison. Okay. Thank you for that. Yes. If you'll just continue to remember Brad and Burke uh, and our family in your prayers. Absolutely, we will. For those of you who don't know, um, Linda hasn't been out gallivanting all over the country the last two weeks. She's been home laying in the bed trying to get over pneumonia. Oh. And uh, she's getting uh, better and better since we got, got her to the urgent care. You can't get an appointment with a doctor when you need one, so you got to go to urgent care. But... Uh, she, I'm going to kick her out of the house next week, so she, <laughs> she'll be here on Sunday next week, we hope. Continue to pray for her. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I, I'm overwhelmed with the compassion. <laughs> yeah. He means it in a loving way. I know he does. Good morning. I got a praise. It's nice to be back, and it's nice to be back in church. It's good to see you. We had a wonderful time, but I would like for y'all to go and pray for my sister. She's going to be 93 years old, and about two days before we got there, she fell and broke her pelvis. Oh, my. But she didn't say nothing to nobody. She didn't say nothing to her daughter. And uh, the day before, Two days before we was leave, she hurt so bad she couldn't get out of bed. So her daughter uh, called, they're going to have a doctor to come to the house. He says she needs to go in the hospital and have some x-ray made. So she did break up her pelvis bone, and she had to lay there for two to three weeks and then have some, some uh, exercise and all, but they do have all this in the hospital too. So I had a wonderful time. It was nice to see her again. But maybe God made, I don't know what, what to say. I just, I just could not believe that happened. And I had to leave. I couldn't stay. And now every time the phone rings, I think something else happened. But then I would like to go and appreciate all the girlfriends who came <laughs> and brought my husband some food. And <laughs> tell him Thank you. Appreciate it. I uh, don't know if that's a thank you or uh, I'm going to let that one go. Yes, I'd like to let everybody know that this past week, Wesley Tory had all of his cast taken off. Oh. He has not been able to use his leg where they put the steel bar in because they had to reconstruct his foot. They've taken all of that off, but he'll be able to put his foot down uh, this coming Wednesday, they're going to start. Well, he still wears a cast up here, you know, plastic. But, but uh, all of his surgeries are, are, are healed. And now he starts rehab and uh, learning to walk. That is good news. And he says, thank you very much. And secondly, uh, up here at the Dempsey Dumpster, up here at uh, 49 and 109, where we take our trash, his name is, T I can't pronounce his last name. His name is Tim uh, Doody Da. That's the you know, best I can do with that. And his wife's name is Becky. Eight years ago, Becky had uh, 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 prostate cancer, uh, colon cancer, I'm sorry. And they took all that out, and now everything's been fine. And she's been feeling bad, and they took her back. And last week, she's got it again. And she also, her entire right lung is cancer. So that doesn't look good. And I think that we should pray for her. Her name, I won't pronounce her last name, but it's Becky. And she really needs our prayer. 
Thank you, Tommy. Uh, Hillary, well, let's see Joni over here in the front. I'd like to ask for prayers for my friend Stephanie Parsons, who had cancer surgery on Friday. I'd like to continue praying for my family. I would appreciate it greatly. Thank you. Thank you. I had been called to go back to school for my bachelor's, and we were concerned about how I was going to pay for school, but I got my report that I got quite a few grants that my spring and fall semesters uh, will be covered by these grants that I received. Praise so, God. Praise be to God. That is good. Amen. I have several prayer requests of friends of ours. Um, the first one is Heather Quickle. She is having really bad back pain. Also, um, a dear friend of Tim's, David Medlin, he had quadruple bypass? Four? Yeah, four bypasses um, last week. Last week, and please remember him in prayer. Also, our granddaughter that lives in Denver, Sutton Marie, she has been sick a lot. And a dear friend of ours had surgery Friday, Perry Mittler, that also lives in Denver. And then we have another friend, Yvette Stone, is having a knee replacement tomorrow. Please remember her in prayer. And then we have a person that works at the office for us that's dealing with a lot of issues, and her name is Liz Cinco. So please remember her in prayer also. Thank you, Kim. Thank you. Appreciate that. Who else? In the back, Mitch. Um, you got me? Uh, Craig um, Stevens, he had brain surgery, and uh, he had complications after his surgery. Um, this is from last week, but it, she told me, like, at the end of service, so I'm telling you this week. And uh, so just be praying for him for the complications after his surgery. Um, also, pray for uh, Brenda Sossaman, and we also have uh, Susan Rosser asked us to pray for her cat, Toby, uh, has a bladder infection. Okay. All right. Thank you for that. Uh, Charlie. Ask prayers for Wesley. He's having brain surgery on the 17th. Uh, the, doctor, <laughs> the doctor says it's a very simple surgery. And I said it may be simple to you. Right. <laughs> but it's not simple to me. And he says, well, I do brain surgery all the time. And he says it's a very localized in a place it's easy to get to so he'll be in that's the good news be in the hospital for about three days and then probably be six weeks he's going to be very limited in what he can do so okay. keep him in your prayers let's keep not only wesley but you and judy also and your old family anyone else a prayer request this morning Let's continue, let's continue to be in prayer for Billy Cockman. I uh, got the message that uh, he was in the hospital. I'm going to shoot down there this afternoon and check on him and see how he is doing. But let's keep Billy in our prayers. All right. Pardon me? Unspoken. Any other unspoken this morning? Raise your hand. Okay. Let's all go to our Lord. Let's spend some time in prayer this morning together. Loving God, we, we come to you this morning to worship and to open up our hearts to the moving of your Holy Spirit and to your word, which brings great truth to our life as believers. We give you thanks, Lord, in advance of what you can and you will do. Uh, in this time that we have together. We come here to renew our faith, to find strength in our faith, to confess our sins, and to come before a holy and loving God. Jesus, we thank you for the names of all those that have been mentioned by different people in our congregation this morning for prayer. You know everything about each one, you know every need they have. You know the spoken and the unspoken. And we just give you thanks that we can trust you 
with each and every one of these people. For those that are here, for those that are watching by Facebook, for those, Lord, that could not make it today, we are grateful for each and every one. We're thankful, Lord, for our community, this wonderful and special community that we live. We have opportunity every week to reach out in your name to each one that comes our way. We thank you, Lord, that we have opportunity to share the good news with other people, that we can live out that good news every day in how we treat our brothers and sisters, that we can show your love through our love to them. Lord God, in this time period, of which there seems to be so many searching for a truth, and others claiming to have the truth, or many truths. We know that you are the way and the truth and the life. And by that we can always depend. You will show us how. You will teach us how. You will fill us with your Holy Spirit to live out our faith. We are totally and completely dependent upon you. We pray for our nation, for the leaders in our nation. We pray, O oh, Heavenly Father, for the church, universal church, all believers. Lord, let us remain faithful to your word and remain faithful to your call. We ask forgiveness, Lord, in those areas in our life that we need to let go of, and yet we still clench them very tightly and to our hearts. Forgive us, O oh God, for those areas that are not within your will. Let our heart's desire be to live in your will. And we give you thanks that you're a patient and loving God who is always calling our name. Lord, I thank you for everyone that's in here this morning. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you will meet us all right where we are in our journey and you will speak to us through your word, that you will reveal yourself to us today and that your Holy Spirit will stir our hearts. We pray all these things trusting in you. In Jesus' name, amen. I'd like to ask our ushers if they would come forward and receive his tithes and our offerings. Loving Lord, we give you thanks that we can give to our church. It is a good thing to give with a cheerful heart. We thank you, Lord, that we can always give of ourselves and our money, our gifts and our talents to glorify the most wonderful, wonderful Lord. Bless these offerings and those who give. And for those who cannot, I pray, O oh Lord, a mighty blessing on them. In Jesus' name, amen.
Before I get started, did somebody put something in my coffee? <laughs> just a strange taste. I was just wondering. Just seeing if you're awake. You know, last week I preached on how Jesus teaches us that he was the true vine and that how we need to abide in him. And you know, I stopped at a particular place because that uh, was the really beginning of a, a message that continues. I'm going to continue that message this morning where I left off. It's out of John chapter 15. And uh, these words might sound familiar to you. I want us to sort of put things in perspective. The reason that I backed up into the Gospel of John, even though we have been traveling all the way through Holy Week, all the way to the crucifixion and then the resurrection. Ascension Sunday is coming soon, in which we're going to uh, remember uh, the ascension of Christ, and then Pentecost will then follow, and that's when we will celebrate the birth of the church and the moving of the Holy Spirit. Uh, But Jesus, uh, prior to his crucifixion, he's teaching his apostles, which we all knew that, of things to come. And he's trying to prepare them for what was ahead of them and try to reassure them, you know, that he will always be with them. And And I know that was hard for them to understand, and it would be for us too. I think it still is. I think sometimes we feel sort of alone in this world and and we just wonder, you know, that our prayers, are they just hitting the ceiling and bouncing off? Is God hearing a word I say? Or maybe that preacher up there, he's talking to everybody, but he, he doesn't know my circumstances. And you're right, I don't know your circumstances, but I know who does. And the Holy Spirit of God truly is God. And it is God's Spirit that moves and speaks and teaches us. We don't have to go to seminary and we don't have to get a degree to understand the love of God. The love of God is something that draws us all together. That's why we're here. We're here because our hearts, our lives, at some time, were touched by something beyond us. And last week we were talking about how we abide in Him and He abides in us. And that we are the vines and He is the branch. And as long as the vines stay connected to the branch, then, my dear brothers and sisters, the fruit of the Holy Spirit can grow and blossom. The grapes will come. Even though in the winter it looks pretty shrivelly. And it always does not the most beautiful vine. You can't really do a lot with a vine. A grape vine has one source, one purpose, and that is to feed the branches. It's not good for splitting wood. You can't carve it. The wood's too soft. It's too gnarly. But boy, it sure can bring some beautiful grapes, can it? And we're sort of the same way. In a lot of ways, you know, we may not be perfected yet. I have not reached that ultimate goal of spiritual perfection, but it's amazing how God can use our brokenness even at times to help someone that is broken. And how when we experience His grace and His mercy, we know it in the first person, and we can share it with someone else that needs some grace and mercy in their life. And even times when the truth hurts, oh my goodness, I don't know about you, I'm not real comfortable when the truth smacks me because it reveals something in me. It reveals something that's not the best. And yet the truth is something that shows us the love of God, maybe more than any other thing besides his sacrifice on the cross. And that's when he makes us face truth. And when we can face that truth, then the Spirit of God moves and cleanses us and makes us whole. It's all a plan. It's all part of God's plan for humanity, for all who desire it. He doesn't force it on us. He offers it to us. And so I offer it to you this morning. John chapter 15, 
Open up your hearts to the Spirit of God as we'll read the Scripture this morning. Beginning at verse 12. Jesus said, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do, not, uh, if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me. I chose you. And I appointed you to go and to bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you asked in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. If the world hates you, be aware that it hated me before it hated you. If you belong to the world, the world would love you as its own. Because you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, servants are no greater than their master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you. If they keep my word, they will keep yours also. But they will do all these things to you on account of my name because they do not know him who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not have sin. But now that they I have, they have no excuse for their sin. Whoever hates me hates my father also. And if I had not done among them the works that no one else did, they would not have sinned. But now that they have seen and hated both me and my father, it was to fulfill the word that is written in their law. They hated me without cause. When the advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the father, the spirit of truth who comes from the father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. This is the Word of God for the people of God this morning. It's a beautiful passage because it is a passage that really talks to every one of us. There's no one excluded. If you're a believer, this is a passage that not only did Jesus speak to His apostles at that time, but He speaks to us now. He commands us not only to be grafted into the vine, but that we are to love one another. You know, I, it's easy to love those that love you back. It's easy to love those who agree with you. It's easy to love those who are close to you. But when he tells us to love one another, why is that so important? It's important for several reasons, not only for myself, that my heart will not be corrupted with bitterness or anger or excuse so that whenever my heart is troubled, I will seek God to find an answer to that trouble instead of trying to seek it in the world. The world is lost. It is. The world is living just by instinct. What they want, and they want it now, And they need it now. They don't worry about the consequences of what they say or do. They just live like the animals that God created. They deaden their spirit to the Holy Spirit. And so whenever when someone speaks truth, they don't want to hear the truth. So what they do is they condemn the messenger of the truth. You know this is true. And so what do we do as believers of this Most High God? We either speak it in love or we speak it in anger and bitterness. We can justify our anger. We can. We can try to be everything to everybody and you will not do well with that, not very long. And so Jesus is teaching them 
You know, there's no greater love than one to lay down their life for a friend. He's speaking about himself to his disciples. He knows that his purpose on this earth was not come to come and build a kingdom. His purpose on this earth was to come, suffer, and to die. Why? He did that because it is the ultimate example of God's love for His creation. If you don't believe that God loves you, then you don't understand the death and resurrection of Jesus. The fact is the Son of God, who could have had it any way He wanted, just by His words, chose to suffer so that you and I could be cleansed and made whole. What a love is this, that He is willing to give His life for my life and for your life so that we could live. He was willing to sacrifice everything so that we could be forgiven and our lives changed. He even thought about all of us after he, is, he would ascend to heaven. And so what did He do, do? But He sends His Spirit to testify to us about the truth. You know, a lot of people say, well, preacher, I, I really don't know about reading the Bible. It takes a lot of discipline to do that. Yeah, it does. Well, I don't even understand a lot of it. I get in there and I get sort of lost. That's why we have Bible studies. I can tell you where we meet. But you know, there's one thing that we don't talk about, and the Bible teaches us that the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit of God, actually reveals the Scripture to us. And that the Scriptures don't contradict themselves. Everybody that says, oh, the Scriptures are always contradictory. No, they're not. Show me where. Show me where. They complement each other. The old and the new complement each other, and the power of the Holy Spirit reveals that to us. So this God, of which we believe, has some commands in our life. This isn't a suggestion, by the way. This is my, this is my command. So Jesus is setting some boundaries. He's actually building what appears to be to the world as walls. And he's saying, this is my command that you love one another as I have loved you. How are you doing with that? How many of you are accomplishing that real well? You know, some people are easier to love than others. That's a real revelation, isn't it? Because <laughs> we can think of every reason in the world why we shouldn't love especially when somebody does something that hurts you or hurts yours. It's hard to love them. And I think the problem that we have with love is we're always thinking of love as an emotion. And that if my heart is not melting when I'm around this person and just feeling so fuzzy that somehow it's just not love. You know, the Bible teaches us that the heart can be one of the most deceptive things. Satan will even use that. Satan uses the very things, and he perverts the very things that God gives us. And one of those things he perverts is love. He will tell you, well, you are not one that loves because you don't love this. But Jesus said, this is my command, that you love one another. We also struggle because... Be honest with you. Let's be real here. We really struggle with lifestyles of people. We do. Now, we may not say it out loud. I know it's not politically correct. But see, I'm fixing to retire, so it doesn't really matter to me anymore. <laughs> don't, don't, don't ask me what I really feel. I got a lot bottled up in there. No, the, uh, the fact of the matter, love is not always just an emotion. It's not in agreement with people all the time. It's actually when we disagree with people, 
And we feel anger because you go at each other over an issue. One is saying no, and one is saying yes, and there's not a yes, no. It is when the Spirit of the Almighty God moves in us, brings change in us, and guess what? The world does not understand it because they're living by instinct. They're living by instinct, natural instinct. They're not living in the Spirit of God. That's not to condemn. I'm not sitting here saying, Ooh, oh, the terrible people in the world. What did Jesus tell us to do? Go into the world. He didn't say be a part of the world. Go to the world and be a light in the darkness. The Holy Spirit of God gives us the ability to do that. And we do it with our actions. See, love is an action. Love is getting up every day, getting dressed, and going out with the intent to be kind to another person. Love is also looking for the good in someone, not the bad. Let the Holy Spirit of God reveal the bad, because it's only through God's Holy Spirit and through His power can they be convicted of it and make changes in their life. It's true in my life. Isn't it true in yours? You can hear your mom and dad tell you all day long, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this, don't do that, when you're growing up. And you, you don't do it because of the discipline. How many were disciplined as a child growing up? Now, you weren't told to go sit in a corner, were you? <laughs> were you told to go to a quiet place somewhere and reflect? No, no. What happened at my house is it, the bush would be moving outside. <laughs> and then it'd be on then. I know. Boy, it's, you're getting awful dangerous there, Steve. There are times, you know, that we push back against what we've been taught was right and wrong. There are times that we have a hard time loving people. They make it hard, and we accept their invitation to making it hard. But I dare say, my dear brothers and sisters, just as Jesus looked out upon Caiaphas and all those who inflicted such pain on him, and he looked at you and I and all of that which is not good and is corrupt in our souls, and he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. That is love. You know, one of the great uh, apologists and one of the, probably the greatest theologian besides Jesus himself in the Scripture was the Apostle Paul. One who used to persecute the church, met Jesus on the road to Damascus, and his life changed. The writings of Paul in the epistles are some of the most beautiful theology you will ever read or ever digest. If you can just spend time in his letters, he will always compliment what Jesus taught on the Sermon on the Mount and the life of Jesus and the death of Jesus, the resurrection of Jesus, and the hope to come in the second coming of Jesus. The Apostle Paul brings all those things together, and he gives it to an early church, early Christianity, first century Christianity, the basis of which they can grow. And that's been in the church since the first century. And it has stood the test of time. It has stood the test of those who are heretics, and it continues to live and reveal God's will to us now in the 21st century. Don't tell me the Bible is just another book. It is not just another book. It is the revelation of a loving God to the people that He loves. You can trust the words. They're true. And so He reveals to us through certain people and the Apostle Paul would compliment what Jesus is talking about, about loving one another 
In 1 Corinthians 13, which he says, If I speak with the tongues of angels and of men, but do not have love, I'm a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries, but do not love, I am nothing. See, love is patient and love is kind. It's not envious, boastful, arrogant, or rude. It doesn't insist on its own way, but it rejoices in the truth. It rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, hopes all things. It believes all things. Love never ends. As for tongues, they'll come to an end. As for prophecies, they will cease. For now we know in part. When I was a child, I thought like a child. I believed like a child. But when I become an adult, I put an end to my childish ways. Now faith, hope, and love abide these three. But the greatest of these is love. Now I left a few pieces out. But the point is, in that, he is telling us, along with being loving and kind and merciful and patient, we are to be obedient to a holy God. We are to listen to the commands of our Lord and fulfill those commands. And one of those commands is to love one another. Love does not mean, like I said before, it doesn't mean that we just go and accept everything that somebody's living in. They can be living in rebellion against God. You're not supposed to embrace the rebellion. You're supposed to embrace the rebellion. The one who is fighting against God. You are to remind them that there is something greater and that greater is seeking them out. Because in this same scripture that I read, he says, I knew you before you knew me. So we have more than a religion. We have a life-changing encounter with something divine and holy. I knew you before you knew me. John Wesley used to talk about the provenient grace of God in which he would tell us that God pursues us before we pursue Him. And that's true. That's a mystery that I did not realize because, you know, until later in life, because I felt like that all my life I was being taught this, to believe this, and that it was something always on me, something I had to do. But I never thought about that God was actually seeking me out. My middle son and his wife live in Bryson City, and they, they own a, a, a blue tick hound dog. Needless to say, they're big University of Tennessee football fans. And so am I. <laughs> but that blue tick hound dog, I can tell you right now, they don't bark, they bellow. And when they start, it never ends. It's constant. But if you ever turn that dog loose in the woods, that nose is working. There's an old understanding of the provenient grace of God and the Holy Spirit, and it's called the hound of heaven. And the hound of heaven is seeking us out before we seek him out. So don't tell me that Jesus didn't die just for everyone and only a few know and a few don't. Understand this, God is seeking you out. He desires that you love Him. He desires to give what He has given to the world, to you personally. You're not lost amongst the billions of people on the earth. He is seeking you out. And that's why when you hear the Word of God and it proclaimed, it's not because of the preacher that you believe, it's because that hound of heaven stirs your soul. And that when we're living in rebellion against God, it makes us uncomfortable. Now we can do like the world. Jesus said, you know, the world hated me before they, hate, they will hate you. 
But because you are a follower of me, it's going to hate you. In other words, we're not in the majority, folks. The majority right now do not love you. But there is a God that does. And He's commanded us to love them. Don't in turn hate them, but instead love them. Love them enough to speak the truth in love. People need to hear the truth, folks. We've been coloring up the truth in our country and all over the land for way too long. The churches remain silent, frightened, and afraid. They may call me a name. Speaking truth in love is one of the most merciful things you can ever do. I don't expect a surgeon to come in and tell me, well, I'm just going to follow the dotted line. I had somebody draw some on you just a few minutes ago. I really don't know how this is going to turn out. I'm not sure even what the problem is, but I'm going to start cutting and then I'll keep cutting until I find it. What? I want like that big of an incision. I want you to know exactly where to put that scalpel. I want you to have some kind of uh, understanding of what you're doing. Don't give me a stick and tell me to bite down on it. I want some anesthesia. You know, we need to hear truth, even though it hurts at times. It hurts all the time, doesn't it? The truth does stir us, especially when we're living in disobedience to God and we're trying to justify things in our life that are not right, that keep us from hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit of God, and they prevent us from loving as we're supposed to love. It's not easy to love, folks. It's hard work. It's not always about how you feel. It's about what you do. There are times, I'm sure, the people at the... Uh, pantry or at the clothing closet to realize that you know what I think that person's using me well get over it that's true it's the world they don't get it they don't understand yet they haven't opened their heart to the Savior be kind to them be merciful be different. Don't be accusatory. Show them the grace of God. Then others can say, well, you just feel like you're being used. You are being used. You're being used by the Spirit of the Almighty God to touch the lives of others. And we remember the teachings of what Jesus says, when you have done it unto the least of these, you've done it unto me. Thank you, Lord, that I could be that person in their life today. What they do with it is between them and you. The question is, what do I do with it? What do I do with this command that tells me to love? It's so much easier to be angry. It's so much easier to call people names. This is what happens in the church. That's why there's so brokenness in Methodism. Too much name-calling and not enough a true loving. I'm not talking about doing a, 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 a line dance to the love train. <laughs> huh. uh, there's too many people really getting into that right now. It's in <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Somebody put something in this. I uh, just. Uh... No, I'm, I'm talking about true loving people. It's not condemning people, it is caring for their soul, it's sacrificing, it's forgiving even when forgiveness seems out of place. It's showing kindness to people and being merciful. 
It's not being angry, pointing a finger. Let me tell you, I don't have to tell you when you're sinning. You know when you're sinning. The Holy Spirit will stir that in you. You've got to stop recreating what the truth is in the Scripture. It's true. And it's reliable. It teaches us not to hurt us or to take away something from us, but to take away the thing that separates us from uh, Him. The hound of heaven is not looking for you so that you can stay lost. The hound of heaven is stirring your heart so you can be found. And yes, it will change you. It will rearrange your lifestyle. You will be different than the world. And the world will not understand you. But my dear brothers and sisters, what did Jesus say to us? If you follow me, you must deny yourself and you must take up a cross. What is your cross? How are you following him? Are you able to love the unlovable? Are you able at least to be a vessel of God's love even though your heart may not always be in it? But you are obedient. You're obedient to say, I will get up and I will do it again today. Why? Because my Lord asked me to. And of all that He has done for me, how can I say no to this wonderful Savior? I want to encourage you, church, stay the course. Believe. Trust in the power of God's Spirit. Trust in His Word. Love as Jesus loved. Give as Jesus gave. And it'll all be okay. Because the one thing He desires in all of us is that we all be in heaven with Him. Our Father does not wish for anyone to be lost. The Bible teaches us that. That's why, for God so loved this world, He gave His only begotten Son, and whoever believes in Him will not perish, but have life eternal. He did not come to this world to condemn it. He came to save it. I cannot save you. I'm a human being. But He can. He is the Creator of all things. It is His Son, Jesus, that we follow. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Let's all stand and sing. And I invite you, if you need, to come and to kneel at this holy place up here. If you need some time with the Lord, I, it's a, it'll be a privilege to pray with you or just leave you alone and let you pray yourself. If you've never made a commitment to this wonderful God, today is the day to do it. Don't put that off. Do it now. Right now, God is calling you. The Spirit has found you.
Hey church, have I told you lately that I love you? I do. I love you with everything in me. Go and serve Him well until we meet again in this holy assembly. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.